Now we've gone through and actually labelled all the labels correctly and given them like theatre, diameter, radius, circumference. Oh no, sorry, not circumference because that's part of ABC for a triangle. We've gone through and labelled our text boxes correctly. So we've got TXTL for the input for the length of a side of a square or a rectangle. We've got a button labelled, so we change the face of the text. So it actually says square, and also we've given it its proper name, BTN square. And we've got a corresponding text box like TXT square. So now we're actually ready to program. So we're going to start with the very first one, which is 4L for a square. So when I click on the square button, I want to take the input of L, times that by 4, and then display that on screen. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first of all, we double click the square button. This will then open up into our programming area. Now you notice that my little developer comments move down. I'm just going to cut that out with the command X, move back up the top of the form, press enter, and paste it back in here. So we have our developer comments can be right at the top, and therefore we know who the programmer is. So all our program is going to be done in this section here with the button square. Now for the button square, we need to declare a variable first of all, which is like dim i, and I'm going to put l there. Now this is different because it's going to be as an integer, and that means it's going to take it in as a whole number. We also need to store the answer somewhere. So I'm going to put um, dim i a n s as the answer, and that's also going to be an integer. Now, there are other variable types we can use. So if the answer is going to result in a decimal point, we can actually use what's called a double integer, which is actually defined as double. And this allows us to use real numbers and have decimal pointed answers. So integers hold whole numbers and doubles hold um, real numbers with decimal points. So the first thing we need to do is get the input. So I'm going to put a little comment in here. And then the next part is the processing. And then the third part of any program is actually the output, where we give it back to the user. So the first thing I need to do is get the input. Now to do that, I need to store it somewhere. So I need to get a variable IL, and that's going to be equal to the text box. But which text box in particular? Well, it's actually going to be the txtl. But what part, what about txtl do I want? I actually want the text part of that. So get me the text part of txtl where the user's typed into this text box. This is txtl. I scroll down, you see here it's called txtl. So get me the text part of this and store that into il. Now, once it's in il, I can then calculate the answer. In the processing part, I can actually say that I answer is actually equal to, and the formula for the perimeter is 4L, four lots of L. So I can actually go four times, which is shift eight, IL, because that's where I've stored what the length is. So I can actually store that into ANS. Now, if you wanted to calculate this one whole equation, you could leave it like that, or you can put it in brackets. And what this means is this will be completed, and once that's finished calculating, it then gets stored. You can do it without the brackets or with the brackets, but as we go into more complex formulas, you're gonna have lots of brackets. Now, once we've calculated and stored it in answer, we now need to output it. Now, on our desktop, we've got an output area for our answer, and it's actually called txt square. So we're going to do the opposite of the input. We're going to say txt square is dot text. So the text area of that text box, I want that to be equal to I answer. So when it's calculated this answer and put it into this variable, I want that variable to appear in the text part of this square. All right, now I'm going to hit start on my program because I don't want to go any further. I want to check that this program's running before I go any further. You notice it's compiling. It's now running. I can then enter in a number up here. So I'm just going to put two. So it should be, if I look at my program, scroll down, you'll see it's four times IL. So it should be four times two, which gives me eight. And that should appear over in here. So when I hit square, it shows me eight. So that program's now working. So let's have a look at the next one. And let's do something a little bit more complex. 
let's have a look at the circle. I'm going to double click circle. You notice it's put the private sub and BTN circle. My other program is still there. I'm going to do much the same thing. I need a input area. I need a processing area. I also need an output area. So that will get me to those three different areas. I need to declare a variable. Now to work out a circle, we need the following thing. We need the radius. So the circumference equal to two pi r. So two times pi times radius. So let's get the input first. So I need to clear a bucket first. I need to go dim i r. I need an answer as well. So I need to dim i a n s as integer. Now, because we're going to be timesing by pi, it's really going to be important that it's going to have decimal numbers because pi is a decimal number. So it's best to have double. Now, you notice that I've used IANS here for answer and also here. Now, this is a local variable, which means only this one can see this answer and only this one will see this answer. So they're not related because they're, um, they're private because they're in a private subclass. So they are local variable just to this function. So the first input I've got to get is the I radius. And that's going to be equal to what the user types into this box here, which is known as TXTR. So we want to grab that information. So IR is equal to txtr.text because I want the text portion of that text box. Okay. Now, once they've got the text portion of that text box, store it in IR. Now I can go to the processing part. Now this processing part is going to be a little bit more complex because you notice the formula is 2 pi r. So 2 lots of pi times r. So 2 times pi times r. So let's create the answer where we want to store it first. So that's there. It's going to be equal to, and I'm just going to put 2 pi and then i r because that's where I've stored the information. Now I want two times pi, so I've got to go two times and then pi times radius. Now because there's basically three or two functions, two times that and then the answer of that times that, I'm just going to put it in one big bracket so I know it completes correctly before going back. Now the computer doesn't understand what pi is, so I could actually put in here if I want 3.142 and then output the answer into the correct text box, which is txt circle. So you can see txt circle dot text is equal to ians. So just make sure that that dot lines up. So this should work to two lots of pi times the radius. So let's go have a look. I'm just going to save this. So file. Save all, now run it just in case I have a crash. I'm going to go down to R and I'm going to put in there 2 and then I'm going to click on circle and it's worked out the circumference as 12.568, which is correct if you check it on a calculator. So that works really well. But we actually haven't used the full pi number, we've only actually used a little derivative of it. So let's use the maths module which is part of the object orientated. So math is part of the .NET framework or part of the operating system. And we can actually go math.pi. So this now is using the full length of pi. Now you notice before we had a, a three decimal point. Now I've got the full pi in there. So let's run this now. And this time I'll put two in there again. And go circle. And you notice now I've got a longer number because it's using the full length of pi. So it's up to you which one you want to use. This is using the math module to get pi. So if you need to be to five decimal points or six, etc., this is a better one to use. And it saves you trying to remember what pi is. So, and you also notice that we've got two times that times IR, which is their radius. So this gives you an idea of how to code each of the buttons. Your job now will be to complete the arc and the triangle, but I would start with rectangle, then the triangle, and then do the arc as the last one. And then you should have a full functioning perimeter calculator.